In this video, I'll show you how to write a captivating book description that sells. What's up guys, welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, my name is Sean, and I was able to earn well over seven figures from my self-publishing business, and I'm simply sharing what I've learned in this channel. So if you're interested in self-publishing, making money online, and building passive income streams, then make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos that I post. All right, so in this video, we are talking about writing book descriptions. So this is something that is pretty important uh, as part of the publishing process. It is not the most important thing. However, it is still very, very important uh, that will affect your book sales significantly because a book description is the last thing that a customer sees uh, before they make their decision to purchase the book. So it is uh, a place where you still want to sell your book and convince them that it is a good buying decision. So let me walk you through step by step how you can write a captivating book description. All right, so going into the slides here once again, this is a question that a lot of people ask is, is book description important? And the answer is yes, book description is very, very important as it's one of the last things customers see before they buy. It can either sell the customer on buying or turn them off to not buy. So if your book description is not attractive, then it can actually turn the customers off into not buying even though you did everything else correctly like the book covers, your book titles, um, good reviews, right? And that is why it's still very, very important to make sure your book description is good. So most important element in a book description is to clearly state who the book is for and what problems it'll solve. So the book description, again, is really calling out your audience, right? Because your audience wants to know that the book is for them. So that is what we're trying to state here and also exactly what problem our book is solving. So this format applies to both nonfiction, a high content book, and also low content books. And that format is this right here. So we have basically a five part formula to a compelling book description. And that is the hook, uh, questions or statement at the top, relate to show credibility, bullet points that pique curiosity, handle objections or relate some more and call to action. So let me walk you through each one step by step. Okay, so starting with the hook question or statement, this is typically a short one sentence phrase or question that attracts uh, people's attention, piques curiosity. So let me show you a good example of that. And uh, this is an example book here that we have. The hook statement will be right here. So bravely endure hardship, perform under pressure and overcome challenges more easily than you ever thought possible. So when people read this, they're like, that is very interesting. That is exactly what I want. Um, how can I do that? Right. And they go and keep reading. So the whole purpose of a hook statement is to get people to keep reading after the hook. Again, keep it short. One sentence. Uh, it can be a question as well. So a question version of this is, do you want to learn how to bravely endure hardship and perform under pressure? Question mark. That can be your hook question. So whatever problem that you think your reader will benefit from, you can call that out in the hook statement. All right, so the second part is to relate and show credibility. So once you get people hooked uh, or interested in reading more, you need to relate to your audience. So you have to show them that you know what you're talking about. Uh, you have to show them that you have some credibility or you can say something that relates to them, right? To show that you understand their problems. So in this book, it says, do you feel overwhelmed by your circumstances? Are you exhausted and overburdened with stress? Are you tempted to give up whenever you encounter obstacles and mishaps? So if you understand your audience, all these questions should be a yes question, meaning your audience is saying, yes, that is exactly what I'm feeling right now, right? Because it is your job to understand your audience. I assume uh, you should be able to come up with something like this uh, where you're basically calling out the problems of the reader. And this is how you can relate to your reader because when a reader reads this, they're like, oh my God, yes. You know, the author understands me and understands what I'm going through. Right. So that is one part of this. Um, if so, the mental toughness handbook is for you. Imagine boldly facing any challenges that comes your way. Imagine confronting any problem you run into and resolving it with confidence. So now we're kind of picturing the end results uh, and the benefit that you will get from reading this book, which is also good. Uh, imagine being 100 percent certain that you can handle any predicament or setback life throws at you. All right. So we have a little 
um, break in how the description looks here with the formatting, which is fine. Uh, and then he, this person, all right, this author is squeezing in a call to action uh, at the top here. You don't have to because the call to action comes at the, the bottom, right, at the end. Um, but that is fine too. One thing I would say is this section, the relate and credibility section, doesn't have to be too long. So just uh, a paragraph or so is okay. And this is the credibility side. So we have Amazon best-selling author Damon Zahariadis provides a step-by-step -step training program for toughening your mind against adversity. All right, so if he's saying Amazon best-selling author because he is. Uh, if you're not a Amazon best-selling author, then you don't have to call yourself a best-selling author. But if you have any credentials that you can share, then it'll be very, very beneficial in this section. All right, so the third step would be bullet points that pique curiosity. So what do I mean by this? Well, the bullet points that pique curiosity is basically where you list out everything that people will learn and every benefit that people will get from reading your book. All right, so this is the bullet point section. Uh, in the Mental Toughness Handbook, you will discover how mental toughness differs from grit. Most people mistakenly think they're the same thing. The top seven traits mentally tough people adopt to conquer any problems they encounter and uh, so on and so forth. So the bullet points is pretty much listing out, you know, what the book is about, the things that they learn. However, what I mean by peaking curiosity is that you're not sharing exactly what those are, right? So this author um, says the top seven traits mentally tough people adopt to conquer any problem they encounter. Okay, this is peaking curiosity, but you're not actually telling people what these seven traits are because they need to buy the book to learn that. So a lot of people make this mistake where they share exactly what the tip is in the book description so that at that point, the customers don't have to buy the book because it's already shared in the book description. Right. So, you know, don't say intermittent fasting is the best way to lose weight, right? Say something like the secret to the one strategy that'll kickstart your you know, weight loss journey or something like that. But don't share them that that is intermittent fasting, okay? So that's what I mean by book description here. Another thing you can do to pique curiosity even more would be something like this. You know, adding a little phrase like, most people mistakenly think they're the same thing, or this one uh, right here, and five surprising tactics they employ to do so. So once again, you're not really sharing what it is. A good example of people doing this is like, you know, blog headlines, uh, YouTube titles, right? Those are all curiosity peaking, you know, titles uh, with some copywriting involved. So you can get more ideas from checking out, you know, relevant videos and blog posts uh, in your niche as well. All right, so step number four would be to handle objections or you can relate some more. So sometimes handling objections is hard for some people. So you can just keep relating a little more uh, before the call to action. Uh, this book has a, a super short section on this. Plus, you'll receive 18 exercises that will help you to apply the advice and tactics you will learn throughout this book. If you're tired of feeling like giving up when life gets tough, grab your copy of the Mental Toughness Handbook today. Start training your mind to endure stress and pressure, face adversity with courage, and boldly weather any storm. So he just kind of related a little more uh, with an extra sentence here. If you're tired of feeling like giving up when life gets tough. Uh, so that is just, you know, another statement very similar to the relating statement up here, right? Uh, just stated once again, right? Said once again, and then he went straight into the call to action, which is step number five, a call to action, uh, which is a very short, simple, straight to the point um, phrase to tell people to purchase the book. So it is very important that you actually tell people what to do. So there are some studies where people compared, you know, two different copies, one with a call to action, one without a call to action. And the one with a call to action significantly performed better. More people took that action uh, that was stated in the copy. So it is very, very important that you say something at the end to get people to purchase. And it's as simple as scroll to the top of the page and click the buy now button, right? If you wanna spice it up a little more, you can say that if you're tired of, you know, feeling like giving up when life gets tough in this case, right? So basically you're using an if then statement. So if you want X, then scroll up to the page 
and click the buy now button, right? Or if you want to do this, then purchase the book is basically what you're saying. So that is the five element when it comes to creating a good book description. You can apply this to nonfiction and you can apply this to low content as well. So the next tip I have is to utilize italicize, bold, and different uh, font sizes to make the text pop. So if you look at this example uh, description here, he's doing the exact same thing, right? He has H2 here and then the body text, he got the bold, uh, and then he probably formatted wrong because the rest of the text is all bold, so he didn't close the bold. Um, but you get the idea, right? Some texts are big, some texts are small, some are bullet points. So it makes the text pop way more. So how do you do HTML formatting uh, easily? Because it can get pretty confusing, right? So if you go to kindlepreneur.com uh, forward slash Amazon book description generator, uh, he actually has a free tool that you can do this. So I'm gonna type in or paste the description from this book, uh, which will kind of reset the formatting. So I'm just going to show you real quick on how I would uh, format this book, okay? So starting from the top with the headline, I would always go with the biggest text possible, which is heading four at the moment. Amazon used to do heading two, uh, now they don't allow it. So uh, heading four is the biggest one right here, okay? And then from here, what you can do is uh, italicize the book title, which is what I like to do. So every single book title, I always italicize. So the Mental Toughness Handbook, we're going to italicize that. And uh, any um, other points that you really want to emphasize, you can either do bold or underline. So let's just do a uh, bold on Amazon bestselling author Damon Zahariades, okay? And anything else such as... Uh, Let's just do how to handle pressure, control your impulses, and endure the emotional and psychological distress, underline that. So you pretty much wanna you know, throw in some bolding and underlying uh, throughout the description to kind of make it look uh, better visually. And for this section right here, we're gonna do bullet points, okay? So let's just do bullet points. Uh, you can do number list or you can do bullet list. Uh, that is up to you, okay? And we have one more bullet points here. And then finally, for the call to action, we can do a heading four once again. And I guess it kind of made all this um, heading four too. So we're gonna fix that. Okay. One last bit here and let's do heading four. Okay. And that is pretty much it. And you can copy code and plug this in to KDP when you're uploading the book. So that is exactly how you come up with book description and also format it. But if you don't want to do all of that, then there are services where you can outsource this uh, cheaply. So this service right here on Fiverr uh, is a very, very good one. Super highly rated. I've been using him uh, and been working with him for a long time. So he will write book descriptions exactly the way I just showed you, plus format it so that it's in HTML format and you can just copy paste that on Amazon when you're uploading it to KDP. So it's a very, very good gig. I highly recommend it if you guys wanna give it a try. I'll leave a link below this video in case you wanna give this gig a try. All right guys, that is it for the video. Hopefully you found this to be helpful. So all of the tools and resources that I mentioned in this video, as well as other tools that I use uh, personally for my publishing business is in the video description below as well as if you do wanna check out my complete publishing course, then the link is below this video as well. You can basically go through the link, book a free strategy session with someone on my team. They'll help you answer any questions you might have and see if my program is a good fit for you. So if you're interested, then the link is below this video. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video, subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you guys in the next one.